Hi, this is Pastor Steve Feinstein again, and I am here to continue with these short videos that I started. And so the last time, what I did is I mentioned that I would be going over um, a book, and I figured I'd take maybe two or three short videos to explain this book, which is Al Mohler's book, He Is Not Silent, a great book about worship and preaching. And then when I'm done with this one, I'll make some videos about another book. I figure during this time of uncertainty and this time where everybody's on um, quarantine or shelter in place, we could all use um, doses of good theology. And so last time we looked at the first chapter of this. This time I'm going to take us through the first half of the book. But in the first chapter, what we saw is we saw what true worship is biblically. And so we, we looked specifically at Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. And we saw that worship ultimately is about us focusing on God, seeing God for what he is and who he is. And then when we see God that way, we realize what we are. We're sinners. And we realize we need atonement. Okay, Therefore, we need the gospel. We need the sacrifice of Christ. And then ultimately, it compels us to action, to respond, to say, God, I will do what your, your word calls me to do. And so now the book, for probably the next 60 pages or so, continues on, on this theme. And, and the first thing uh, Dr. Moeller focuses on is if we're going to worship God and preaching, okay, preaching the scriptures is what really gets us to see God as he is, <clears throat> then our preaching of the word is, is definitely going to focus on God's Trinitarian character. A and what that means is real simple. God the Father is the God who speaks. He is the God who reveals. If he would not have revealed himself in Scripture, we would know very little about him. Okay, But he has revealed himself to us. He expects us to, to read his word and, and hear what he says of himself, what he says of us, what he says of the world, really, uh, you know, to, to build our worldview. <clears throat> he has called us to that. So in, in one hand, anytime we're preaching, we're focusing on the God who speaks and what he has said. But specifically, the second member of the Trinity, God the Son, is the Son who saves, right? So you have the Father who speaks, you have the Son who saves. So every text of Scripture, in one way or another, is supposed to, to focus us on the gospel, focus us on who it's all about, the Son who saves. And then mixed within this is the Holy Spirit who illuminates. And what that means is the Holy Spirit is the one who gives... Uh, believers the ability to understand and apply the scriptures to our hearts, right? So to understand God, we have to know who he is. He's a trinity, one God, three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Father speaks, the Son saves, and the Holy Spirit makes it to where we are able to understand that message. The Holy Spirit gifts a preacher who's faithful <clears throat> so that preacher could preach the word right, and the Holy Spirit also um, fills the hearts of the listeners who are obedient to him to, to understand the word and to grow in the word, okay? And so if our goal is to see God as he is, to worship God as he is, uh, and the center of our worship service then is seeing God and understanding God, then the center of our worship service is going to be the preaching. Now, some of you might think, but I've been going to church for a long time and um, preaching doesn't seem to be the, the focal point of my church, maybe. maybe. Maybe the singing is, or maybe something else is. And I'll tell you the reason that's the case is because you likely go to a church where the preaching that is happening is not what the Bible means by preaching. You're likely hearing talks, or you're hearing topical sermonettes, which at the most can only build Christianettes, right? Um, if you are hearing preaching in a biblical way, it will be the center of the worship service. Everything will feed into that, and it will be the part that, that you're longing for. Because if we're the people of God, what we are longing for is to hear God. And the scriptures make it clear that the manner in which we hear God today is by his word being preached and proclaimed. At, at our church, we are committed to this at Sovereign Way Christian Church. And so Dr. Moeller rightly says <clears throat> there's only one biblical way of preaching, and it's called expository preaching. And you might wonder, what is expository preaching? Expository preaching is where the text 
defines the sermon. Meaning it's not about the preacher coming up with an idea and then finding a scripture to support his own idea. No, a preacher preaches through a text of scripture. The text is what determines the meaning. The text is what gives the structure. In fact, the Bible's the word of God, not the preacher, not what the not the preacher's musings. It's what the scriptures say. And so if you want to hear from God, then a sermon has to be saturated with the scripture. Not scriptures sprinkled on top, not scriptures thread together, um, but no, the, the, the sermon has to be completely defined and built off the scripture. Okay, so a simple definition is an expository sermon is where the text of scripture is explained and the text is applied. Okay, but the, the focal point is the text itself. In our therapeutic narcissistic age where everybody's being told it's about them, a lot of preachers wrongly think we have to start with the needs of the people, right? The questions they may have and then work from there to a text. No, you start with the text. It is the word of God. And from the text, you work out to application and it will speak to the needs and questions that people may have. But the text is central. The text is primary. We have a crisis in preaching in evangelicalism today because people don't preach expositional sermons. They, they Sometimes they think they do, sometimes they say they do, but it's not expositional if it doesn't have the following characteristics. You know, we follow a God who lives. He is the living God, and the living God speaks. And to his people, in Deuteronomy 4.33, chapter 4, verse 33, God says, Has there ever been a people who've heard the word of God? And yes, it's God's people. This is a privilege that he gives to us. And so we should want to hear his word preached and proclaimed rightly. So what is biblical preaching then? What does expositional preaching look like? As I said, it presents and explains the text. It applies the text. The sermon begins with the text and works out from there and then applies the text. And so the way that this is done right is the preacher has to do some homework. You may have heard the term exegesis. Exegesis is where the preacher studies the scripture in the original language. He's studying it in its context, its historical, its cultural, its literary context. He's figuring out the structure of the text. Because this idea that every sermon is going to have three points, no, that, that's a preacher imposing his ideas on the scripture. The text itself is what determines the structure. How many sub points, right? So any given text of scripture is going to have one main point that God is driving home. And then the text itself will let you know how many sub points. And the text itself will let you know how to, how to apply it. So it begins with a detailed study of the scripture to understand it. Then it, it follows that there will be a presentation of the scripture, an explanation of what it means in its context. Okay, because what God said to the original audience is what he's saying now. And then after it's been rightly explained, after the word of God has been taught to you and you're able to see like, wow, this is what God is saying. Then from there, we could get into its implications. What does this mean for me? What does, what should I stop doing? How should I be thinking now that I wasn't thinking before? What should I repent of? Because every scripture is going to tell you that in, in, in one way or another. Now listen, the explanation of the text is what's central. Everything else is secondary. Like for example, evangelism. Yeah, we evangelize in sermons. Every sermon's supposed to have the gospel, but that's secondary. The point of the sermon is to explain the text. And then from the text, you evangelize. We want to encourage and edify and warn with sermons. But that's, again, secondary. Primary is we explain the text. That is the word of God. From there, then we could see how the word encourages, warns, and edifies us, right? So the centerpiece is always the text because we serve the God who speaks, the Son who saves, and then the Spirit who who illuminates the text, okay? And so when we let the text speak, it establishes our worldview. It tells us what to think uh, because does not God who is king of the universe and our, our maker, is he not the one who gets to tell us what's right and what's wrong and how we should think and how we should live and how we should reason? 
Now listen, that rubs our culture the wrong way. Our culture resists authority, but God himself is authority, and we have no right to resist his authority. And if this is what we say it is, his inspired and errant word, then every word in this by default is authoritative. It has the right to command and change us. So if a preacher preaches what's in this, rather than his own musings, or rather than what the culture wants to hear. If the preacher preaches what's in this, then the sermon by definition is authoritative. And that's where the preacher's authority comes from, the text and the text alone. Not his personality, not his intelligence, not his degrees. The authority comes from the word alone and how accurate and faithfully it's been explained and applied. And if a sermon explains the text of scripture, and at that point it becomes not the word of man, according to the scripture, but it becomes the word of God itself. That's what Paul tells the Thessalonians, that you received from us not the words of man, but the very words of God. That is what faithful preaching actually is. Okay? And that's why all Christians should crave expositional sermons. If the sermons you hear have no authority and just tickle your ears and don't deal with what, what is on every page of this, then honestly, ask your preachers to, to do what's faithful. And if they refuse, then go to places that will preach expositionally and preach faithfully. Listen, when this word, when the Bible is preached correctly, it again... It exudes authority, the very authority of God, and it creates a reverence within the people of God. The one thing I love about my church is they want to hear the word of God. They see it as the centerpiece of the worship service. And if we give them any less than the word of God, they would rightly be disappointed with us. See, when the word is preached and it's authoritative and people know that and they get used to it, the thing they want most every week is give me God's word. Show me God in his word. Tell me from his word what he wants to say to me and what he's demanding of me what he's requesting of me, what he's encouraging me with, right? And so people develop a reverence for God's word. It becomes the highlight of their week to gather on the Lord's day to hear God's word preached. And I feel that love at Sovereign Way Christian Church from our, our members and our attenders. It's wonderful to behold. And so if that's not the norm in your church, again, press the pastors to do what's right, Okay, this is the word of God, not what's up here, not what's in my mind, not what I could creatively come up with. This and this alone. This is what it should should all be about. You know, Paul in Colossians chapter 1 verses 24 through 29, he more or less tells them that that he was made a minister of the word of God. So, we don't make ourselves ministers of God's word. It's something that God calls us to. So again, the authority doesn't reside in us. And then he tells them that he was made a minister to do what? To proclaim the fullness of God's word. Read Colossians 1, 24 through 29. He was made a minister to declare the fullness of what? Of God's word. That's what it's about. He proclaims it, which is the word to preach it. Okay, it's not a dialogue. It is a proclamation. Okay, that is what he was called to do. And then he tells us what the word does. In that text, he says he proclaims the word to teach, to warn, and to preach Christ. And when he proclaims Christ, teaches the word, and warns you, he says the result that comes from the word of God fully being proclaimed is that you become mature. And then we're all presented to God in the maturity. This is how he grows us through the faithful proclamation of his word. So Christian, I end with this because, I mean, I just summarized like 70 pages of this book and he's absolutely right. That's what the scriptures teach, okay? And this is what needs to be recovered, okay? Do we have the reverence for God's word that we see in Nehemiah chapter eight when the people themselves say, bring out the book. And then when it's brought out, they all stand as it's being read. And then Ezra the priest explains what it means to them. That is the biblical model of preaching. And that is how you hear from God today. That's how you worship God today. That's how you grow. And so if you're preferring the church to be about you, 
you have forgotten who the audience of our worship is. It's not you. If you think the audience of a worship service is you, then you've made yourself into God. You've displaced him and put yourself at the center. No, he is the centerpiece. He is the audience. It's about him. So we sing songs of adoration to him. We pray corporately to him. And then after we have spoken what's on our heart to him and have sung that, what's on our heart to him, then we want to hear what he has for us. And he has given it to us in his word. And the way you're going to get it consistently is through expository preaching week in and week out. Settle for nothing less in your church. Your growth depends on it. And by the way, expositional preaching, once you hear it, it teaches you how to read the Bible. And so you can then do expository reading and start to uh, just pull more and extract more out of God's word every day you read it. So I cannot emphasize enough how important this is and why this is the way preaching and worship is supposed to be. Next time, I plan to finish this book, but hopefully you're, you're being blessed by hearing some of these, these truths from He Is Not Silent. Again, truths that simply reflect what the Word already tells us. With that, I look forward to um, finishing this next time. God bless you guys.